just before around the world in five. The deposed Emir of Kano, Mohammed Sanusi II, has arrived in Lafia, the Nasara state capital, where he has been banished to. Al Haji Sanusi was flown out of Kano in a private aircraft after his dethronement earlier today. The aircraft conveying the former Emir touched down at an airstrip in the Nasara state capital. The video obtained by our correspondent shows Al Haji Sanusi disembarking from the plane. He has been exiled to Nasara state after the secretary to the state government announces dethronement and replacement with Aminu Adu Bayero. Sudanese Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok has confirmed that he is safe and well after an attack on his convoy in the capital. The Prime Minister says the attempt on his life would not stop him from continuing with his political work and delivering change for the, his people. Let's head to our London studios now where Simon Pusey has more on this and other international news in Around the World in Five. Good evening and welcome to the Channel's newsroom here in London with your international news Around the World in Five. Abdallah Hamdok, Sudan's Prime Minister, has survived an assassination attempt after his convoy was attacked in the capital Khartoum. Pictures on state television showed several damaged vehicles at the site of the blast. Witnesses say the attack happened near the northeastern entrance to Koba Bridge, which connects Khartoum north to the city centre, where the Prime Minister's office is based. The convoy appeared to have been targeted from above. Mr Hamdok was appointed to head Sudan's transitional government last August, a few months after the overthrow of the long-term president Omar al-Bashir. He has reportedly been moved to a safe location. The trial has opened in the Netherlands of three Russians and a Ukrainian for the murder of 298 people aboard Malaysia Airlines flight MH17 shot down over the Ukraine in 2014. The Boeing 777 went down amid a conflict in eastern Ukraine after Russian-backed rebels seized the area. Investigators say they have proof the Buk missile system that shot it down came from a military base in Russia. A judge called it an atrocious disaster as the trial is in a court near Amsterdam's Schiphol airport, the departure point for the Kuala Lumpur-bound flight. This trial is thought to be the culmination of the most complex criminal investigation in Dutch history. More than 10,000 people have turned out for the Democratic candidate Bernie Sanders at a rally at the campus of the University of Michigan. Let us defeat Donald Trump. Thank you all very much. The former frontrunner is attempting to perform another upset at Tuesday's vote in Michigan, the same way he defeated Hillary Clinton in the state in 2016. However, after last week's Super Tuesday results, Joe Biden has the momentum, and Bernie knows victory is crucial to his campaign before the contest shifts to Florida and Illinois. We're taking on the Wall Street executives who are helping to fund his campaign. We're taking on the corporate establishment. We're taking on the political establishment. We're going to win this election. Police in Mexico have clashed with protesters after a huge march to mark International Women's Day. Thousands of women took to the streets, angry at the wave of gender-based violence that has hit the country. People smashed through security barriers erected around the city's monuments, damaging landmarks and graffitiing historic statues to demand authorities do more to halt what's become known as femicides. The campaign for action on gender-based violence in Mexico has gained momentum with two high-profile murders, a 25-year-old woman by her alleged partner and a 7-year-old girl who was reportedly taken from her school. In Mexico, at least 10 women are murdered every day, according to authorities. Meanwhile, on the same day, Guinean President Alpha Conde has appointed the first ever female brigadier general. The announcement of Mahawa Sila's promotion was made on Sunday to coincide with International Women's Day. During the announcement, President Conde promised to highlight female empowerment, saying, Women come first in Guinea. And finally, Algeria have won the Gold Ball African qualifiers, meaning they could be on the way to Tokyo's 2020 Paralympics. Wearing blackout goggles, players try to score a goal against the opposition by throwing a ball towards their opponent's net, who in turn try to block the ball using their entire body. The game was originally designed for blind athletes in 1946. Algeria's men's and women's teams won gold medals. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos. Thank you, Simon. Let's switch to sports now. Here's Charles Aruka.
Many thanks, Millicent, and welcome to Sports News. Nigeria's 2004 relay Olympic bronze medalist Deji Aliu is confident the country's track and field athletes will spring surprises at this year's Tokyo Games, which are 136 days to the start. The 2003 All-Africa Games 100 meters gold medalist says some of the country's athletes have set impressive timing at various international events, an indication they'll be ready for the bigger challenge. Very sure, I'm hopeful this year. I think this year will make a lot of difference. Our performance this year, will, you know, will be a little bit encouraging compared to the past, with the results we've been seeing the last year and. Um, I'm very sure it's going to translate to something, you know, something good, something that will put a smile on our face. Um, I'm very, very sure this year will be different from our previous Olympics. We have, we have a lot to celebrate, you know, at, at the Olympics. I mean, yeah, quite a lot of athletes. I can't start mentioning names because, I mean, the truth is more, more will still spring up before the Olympics proper. From athletics to soccer, the Nigeria Football Federation has directed that no match should be played in the NPFL without the full complement of medical equipment and personnel following the death of Nassau United defender Chinemem Martins in a match day 23 clash against Katsina United in Lafia. All match commissioners and host football associations are to inspect all the facilities and carry out test runs before giving the go-ahead for any match to be played. And in Europe, Valencia players trained behind closed doors earlier today ahead of Tuesday night's UEFA Champions League clash against Italian club Atlanta, the first Champions League match ever to be played in an empty stadium. Atlanta confirmed last week that the decision was made because of the coronavirus and an order from the Spanish Health Ministry. That's it on Sports News and it's back to Melisande with the wrap. And the main news again. The Kano state government today dethroned Mohamedou Sanusi II as the Emir of Kano, citing alleged refusal to abide by instructions given to him. The state government also appointed former Emir of Bichi, Aminu Ado Bayero, as his replacement. Meanwhile, the deposed Emir has since arrived Nassau Estate, where he has been banished to. Well, that's the news at 10 tonight. Many thanks for watching. I'm Millicent Walker. Have a good night.